Hi, everybody. We made it to Friday. Um, welcome to Coffee Break with Christine. Today we will be interviewing Denise Castro, who's one of the founders of the Virtual Mom Collective. She started this um, during COVID, so um, kind of as a support system and everything for moms and how to deal with kids, um, you know, during COVID and all the struggles that they've had to go through with family and all of that fun stuff. So I'm very excited to talk to her. She will just be coming on now. Thank you for joining us. We're just waiting for Denise to come on. That's weird. I don't think she sees. Oh, here she comes. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. How are you? Good. So good to see you. Thank you for your time and for joining me today. Of course. My pleasure. Yeah. So why don't you tell everybody, um, you know, who you are, what you do, and how you started the Virtual Mom Collective during COVID and all that fun stuff. Tell us a little bit about your journey to entrepreneurship, because I know before the Virtual Mom Collective is new, so tell everybody kind of how you got there. Sure, absolutely. Um, my name is Denise. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm the founder of the Virtual Mom Collective, which was a, I guess, a new concept, a concept or a new baby, as I like to say, that was mm -hmm. conceived in early March when everything started getting a little insane with COVID over here in the U.S., um, I'm actually, my background is in marketing and graphic design, so I do quite a bit of that on the side. Uh, I have a full-time job at the same time, so VMC was kind of like a community I wanted to create. I never thought of it as a business, so to speak, until it took off. So um, March 5th, I uh, started running a little business plan of what I thought it could be possibly in the next six months. Uh, but little did I know that it would cre uh -huh. create a community <laughs> that was very needed by moms, especially uh, women and women who, who are entrepreneurs themselves and business owners to sort of, um, you know, be heard, understood and connect in virtual communities in such an uncertain time. Mm -hmm. So um, It took off. It really took off. We got a lot of uh, followers and supporters and we started hosting webinars, which is really you know, for moms, by moms, and we have live events, uh, like yourself, life coaches, mm -hmm. and um, business coaches, and women who all around, you know, are trying to um, showcase their business, uh, especially now virtually, which is like the best time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, be transparent of, of, of what they're trying to achieve in, in the next couple months is 2020 is it's been a very, very trying year for everybody. Yes. Just to go back, sorry to just interrupt you for a minute, but when you said you originally started writing the business plan, but it you didn't plan for it to be a community. So what was the business plan originally? So the, the business plan uh, originally was, was I'm going to create uh, an event, um, so to speak, where we all get together, monthly events, mm -hmm. kind of like a community Facebook group. Okay. Um, and then it kind of sort of formed and morphed into something similar, but I realized the women that I was connecting with are all bloggers, um, have their business of their own, work two jobs, um, are at home um, most of the time, uh, working remotely, 
And so we all had this common denominator. So I was like, why don't I build a community and make this more of like, you know, a month to month. Um, we have the webinars, uh, as I said, but a month to month uh, help group, help group as a, a really support group. So mm -hmm. the support group kind of changed its face from just being a support group to being, you know, di all different elements for women. Um, mm -hmm. We had happy hours and we had um, sponsorship. We had brands kind of reach out to us like, hey, I really like what you're doing. Um, you know, I have this, I have this particular product um, and I think it'd be great if you could talk to your moms about it. Um, so I started looking into, you know, into that and, and I was like, wow, this is pretty intense because I never thought about, you know, um, you know, putting brands out there or, or showcasing other communities and businesses that were similar to mine. Mm -hmm. So, um, it all, it's just kind of interconnected. Like the business plan was, I guess, a doodle on my journal. I was like, this is nice, <laughs> a community and with hearts and like, you know, like a membership idea of like, you know, women kind of like how you have set up with your, your emprendedoras in, in Spain, mm -hmm. same idea, but, um, you know, just for moms. Mm -hmm. for That's moms. awesome. I love how it just kind of naturally happened and it just shows you like the need that was there, a gap that needed to be filled, especially when all this craziness happened. I can't even imagine, like I told you, I don't have children, but I just can't imagine being a mom right now. Honestly, I said <laughs> that to my mother recently <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, so kudos to you. And I think it's amazing. Um, so share some of the topics that you guys have covered so far. I know I owe you a blog post that'll be coming soon. Um, but kind of some of the speakers that you've had and different topics that you've covered in the community. Sure. Absolutely. So we've actually had, um, all different backgrounds. We've had a school administrator who I connected with in Oklahoma and she runs her own blog. And we did a really interesting, um, chat because we, we highlight, highlighted black voices matter and what it's like being an African American mother during this time, mm. um, affect, affected by COVID. And at the same time, um, having, not having the same benefits that many of us have, um, so I wanted to, I wanted to pinpoint that, you know, I wanted to hurt to express her, her viewpoints of what it's like being an African American woman, mother and mm -hmm. blogger in today's age. So I love was, that. It was very, it was a very, very, um, powerful and raw topic. Mm -hmm. Um, she came to talk a little bit about how she started her community and her blog, um, recently because she, again, she's a principal of a school, so they're all doing uh, remote learning but her husband is considered an essential worker. So how do you navigate that when you're full-time principal, you have four children and your, and, and your, your husband is a, considered an essential worker. So wow. um, yeah, that, that was a very, um, very, very important. So, so we can understand, you know, her perspective and what the black African community goes through um, during, especially during COVID. Um, we also have a doula who's going to be talking next month and the importance of having a doula when you uh, perhaps are not uh, in, you, you don't want to have a birth at a hospital during this time. It's very, it's, it's a very, very stressful situation, but um, doulas are actually not um, allowed in hospitals right now next to their clients. Oh, I didn't know that. Because of, yeah, because of COVID. So she's going to be talking about how, you know, how hard that is on mothers, because specifically if you were hope, hoping for a home birth right now, it's, it's kind of uncertain um, given the situation with, with the restrictions for COVID. Mm -hmm. So these are like situations um, and they all are, are experts in their topics of things that are navigating and affecting us right now. So um, it's affecting her business as a doula and it's affecting her, her clients and, and myself. I think about it, I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, what's my pregnancy or the end of my pregnancy going to be like? in the future. So, um, and it all comes down to, to many things. Um, you know, your right to, to have access to that sort of healthcare. Um, you know, having, having, um, the right to say, if you, you know, if you don't want to go to a hospital because you don't want to be exposed to other COVID patients. Um, right. it's, it's a, it's a very strange, a situation you never thought of. And now we're, we're giving those resources to our moms so that they're well aware and have, you know, 
the de can make the decisions wisely before they're entered into these into these situations where we're not really sure like what way we're going to go. Um, we also have uh, people like Wadalis um, who've come, um, um, women who've been laid off recently um, mm -hmm. who work for big tech companies um, like LinkedIn and Google, and they took their layoff as a sign to start their own businesses mm -hmm. and start their, you know, um, there's a very interest, interesting project called the Mom Project. Sorry, I, I think I lost you connection one second. Yeah, you... I think we're back now. Um, what was the name of the project? Sorry about that. That's okay. It's the, it's the Mom Project, and okay. basically what what the Mom Project is, it was, it's like a LinkedIn, um, create uh, created and and um, constructed for the working mom who's returning to the workforce after having children. Mm. So you know, they, they work and, and partner with employers who get it, you know, who get that, you know, our maternity leave in this country is very limited. Um, you know, it's unpaid. We get three months to figure it out and three months or less. And, you know, some of us mm -hmm. people back after a month and a half and have it all figured out. And you got to resume your career. Like, you know, you don't have an infant at home um, who you may or may not still be feeding. Um, and, you know, sometimes your spouse doesn't get paternity leave. So what do you do? You automatically put that child into daycare. So our resources, it's like we, we, we pick our children versus our careers. And then when it's safe enough or we feel like they're an adequate age, we're like, okay, now it's time to return to the workforce. Mm -hmm. And some of, it, some of that, those decisions is not easy because they feel like that's a gap in your, in your resume. So they feel like you, you perhaps... Uh, uh, are a little, you know, behind or, or, or you have to come up to speed on, on where you are and where you want to be. So the mom And they project, almost feel like guilty for having a guilty, kid. Right. You know? like having, exactly. Or, you know, I, and we have a lot of moms who have given up their careers entirely to be a, a stay at home mom. And that, that's, a, that's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is that, you know, we, there's this very, if there's a strange, um, I don't want to say judgment, but yeah, it's a strange judgment um, for the, the 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 woman who wants to re return to the to a career path, even if she's been out of the workforce for many years. Mm -hmm. So if she doesn't have an established business of her own, they almost feel like, okay, well, she chose the path of raising her children. You know what? What else could she possibly offer? Did she go back to school, or has she has she, has she been up to date? with, you know, with the, what's going on in, in the world and, and, and with her, her, her job position to, to feel like she can, you know, come back and make it a smooth transition. There's always that, you know, that uncertainty. So the mom project is, is all about, you know, empowering the mom and, and partnering again with employers who get it, you know, they're mm -hmm. all women CEOs. They all have families. They get it. Like it is, un, it is unrealistic for, for us to have unpaid three month maternity leave and then have to send our babies to daycare because we have no other means and then you know be forced to go back to our jobs because we need to make an income mm -hmm. so and um, the daycares are just so expensive it's, so expensive. it's like expensive. then the mother feels like extra pressure to go back and Absolutely. make more money just so she can afford the daycare right so it's like a whole cycle it's a whole cycle. It's a, mm -hmm. and it, the, the guilt that we go through, you mm -hmm. know, it's never ending. It, I, I suffer it myself. I'm like, mm -hmm. am I, am I doing enough? Am I being enough of a mother mm -hmm. to balance my career? And I almost felt like I was a little guilty. I, I felt guilty about BMC about wanting to need help to connect with other women because I know that other women are busy. I know like they're busy. They're, they're juggling it all. Mm -hmm. So, um, I felt, you know, I, it's mom guilt. It's a real guilt. It's, it's something that never goes away. It's, it's something you, you just work at every mm -hmm. day. I feel it sometimes, even though I don't have kids, like with the other women in my community, cause most of them are moms and I'm like, Oh, should I ask them to do this? Or if they want to do this or attend this event or, you know, cause they're busy and they, and I know they have kids and, and husbands you know, but and... you know, you know, Christine, I'll tell you as a mom, we love being invited mm. because 
I, there's this, there's just an understanding that when we have children, we, we want to be left alone, but we almost feel forgotten. Mm. We almost feel forgotten um, because we're like, you know, obviously we, we, we want to be back in the social arena quickly and, and fairly quickly, but at the same time, we don't, we want to feel like we're acknowledged. Um, I remember I didn't go to an event for work for probably nine months. And when I did, I felt really awkward. Mm. I was like, how do I, it, it like, was like out of really, place, like of you, place. cause you hadn't been there. Mm -hmm. I had to relearn how to be social. Um, I, you know, was like my, the topic of my conversations was my child, like milestones. And so, um, I felt like I was being met with a little bit of scrutiny. Like they were looking at me like, Hey, um, that's nice. Um, what about, you know, this, that has something to do with, you know, business. Um, so it was like, kind of like, you know, changing, changing modes, um, mm -hmm. which is okay. You know, it's, it's, it's hard, but it's like, um, it takes a while for us to kind of like switch modes. Um, you know, you, I, I, I believe you're, you're married. So, you know, it's the same thing. Like you switch modes. So you're, you're in, you're in business mode and then you turn into like, you know, spouse mode. Like I'm not going to answer my phone. I'm not going to be on, you know, my email or. I'm, I'm going to respect that time. So it's mm. just about learning boundaries. Like boundaries. You know, you to talk about that. <laughs> I was going to say, I try my best. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a, a work in progress, but yes, that is what I've been focusing on for sure. <laughs> um, okay. Well, let's switch gears a little. If you could share some of the lessons um, that you've learned on the business side throughout all of this. I usually ask people how COVID affects your business, but it actually, in your case, started your business, like this, this business. So that's amazing because I always love to hear when people are doing better than before, you know, um, or have, you know, a more positive outcome of whatever is going on than before because of COVID. But what are some of the lessons that you learned entrepreneur wise, um, throughout all of this? I want to say that, um, I feel like kindness has been the best collaboration, oh. um, before, uh, and, and maybe it's also COVID learn, you know, sort of teaching the lessons in between, but, um, for people to reach out to me and be like, Hey, I really want, um, to showcase what my soaps can do. Um, give you an example. Um, I'm a mom and, um, she created her soaps because her daughter was, has a very, very bad skin allergies. So mm. she had, she was paying for these very expensive steroids to, you know, maintain her, her daughter's, um, eczema. And, um, she got tired. She was like, I'm tired of reading the labels of what's, what's in these steroids. It, it's not helping her, her skin. So she started these, these organic soaps. It's all organic products. Mm. Um, cruelty free and she started them in her home um, so I started listening to similar stories these moms are creating these things at home out of necessity mm -hmm. um, a necessity because they just couldn't afford certain things and so they thought outside the box and started creating it from home which is kind mm -hmm. of what BMC did that's awesome and I love working I love working with businesses like that because that's what's going to help themselves because there's no, you know, there's no huge PR and marketing behind them. They're just, this is who they are. I created this because I needed it for my child. And um, this is my price point. And if you feel like this product is identifiable with what, what, you know, what you think, then I think it would sell. And her, her shop has taken off, completely taken off. Um, oh, that's so awesome. She's, she sponsored one of our events for our moms and they all got, you know, a soap and, I'm an addict. I love the soaps. My husband yeah. starts using my soaps. I'm like, stop <laughs> using the <my> soaps. <laughs> He's like, oh, but they're so good. I'm like, I know. <laughs> so one thing that it's taught me is that through kindness, you make the best collaboration. Yeah. And the business deals, you know? Uh-huh. I love that. And so how are, what are some of the ways that through the Virtual Mom Collective, that you empower and give women's businesses that are members this visibility? How or what are some of the things that you ladies do? Sure. So when we, we have a lot of requests to come and talk, a lot of people have a lot of business, businesses. It's mm -hmm. been, obviously it's tripled. 
um, quadrupled in the past two months. Mm -hmm. So we, we, um, well, Dallas, bless her, because she's amazing, she mm -hmm. created a form for us um, to, you know, sort of um, get our moms to talk about themselves a little bit um, so we can capture that information. And they talk about their families. They talk about a little bit about why they started their business, um, you know, obviously links to their business or if they blog, um, any publications that they want to share uh, with us. And um, when we find, we go through all of them, I just want to say we do, um, we find something really of value. And the common denominator here is that their business has been directly impacted by COVID. Mm -hmm. So um, how are they navigating this the best that they can? Um, and why it's important for them to talk about, you know, what they've learned in mm -hmm. their business and what they've learned as moms um, during this time. Because a lot of them, are still staying home while their partner has to go out and, you know, mm -hmm. be in an office or, you know, in, a, in, an, in an environment. Um, so they, um, they're kind of like the forefront, you know, keep keeping the, keeping the, the fort in order at home. So, um, yeah, it was just listening to stories, you know, it's, it's, um, it's really interesting. We bring the barriers down and I think that's what COVID has done. Um, it's brought the competition down not the competition, but it's color. It's more collaboration than mm -hmm. competition. Mm -hmm. So everybody just wants to collaborate. So we just give that opportunity to that person to, and say, hey, we really like what you had to say. I think you should come on uh, next month at one of our webinars. We always have five moms, and each of them uh, either have a different topic or um, they, they, um, they always talk about how it's affected by this new normal. So whether it's them being a specialist uh, a lawyer, um, for example, we have a lawyer mom, um, and how her practice has been affected not only as a lawyer, but as a mom during this time. Like, what is she seeing? Like, what are the cases um, mm -hmm. lead from a legal standpoint, which I think is going to be very interesting. So it's like, it's like almost giving us free education, um, you know, through, through these monthly webinars that we're doing. And at the same time, we're connecting and we're, we're, we're creating a community with our moms. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like every mom that has come on, I have their phone number, um, you know, I have their, their email and I, I feel, I feel uh, free to text them and ask them questions. And, and, you know, I feel like when things are get better, hopefully I will be able to, you know, meet them and, and, and just have like a, a one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversation um, that I never thought possible. Um, at the beginning when I became a mom, I had a very hard time finding um, mom friends or mom tribe or, you know, I, was, I just felt like I didn't, was, didn't have it enough together to, to be part of a group. Aww. Um, so, you know, COVID has changed the dynamics of that because obviously we're all online and we're all with our kids. So it's a lot. We need, we need to talk to somebody. So it's like, a yeah, therapy. it's amazing how much, like, I will admit at times I get sick of it, but how much or how many connections and like authentic connections that you can make even just over the internet, you know, you and I were introduced that way yeah. and um, just so many people, like I miss the physical and like meeting someone for coffee for sure. But it, like, I'm grateful even with Spain, with Femprendedoras, like we've been able to keep it going, even though I live across the world, you know? So it's, it is truly amazing. Like how you can, um, make things happen just from a virtual standpoint. Okay. But um, so what are your um, goals and are you and Odalis' goals? Because I know you both kind of run this. What are your goals going forward? Is the plan to keep it um, electronic or are you hoping to do some in-person events once we're, things we're, clear up? Or? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, that's where we're gearing up. Um, we're mm -hmm. gearing up to a membership idea. Um, with, you know, the current um, groups that we have. Um, and we're hoping that by spring of 2021, we can do an in-person, um, you know, meet and greet, like a big reunion, mm -hmm. <laughs> a big reunion of post-COVID, post or hopefully, you know, things won't, won't be as bad. But um, th that's, that's the idea. And kind of like create like a networking event. Um, and we're going to just re-celebrate um, all our connections and, and mm -hmm. what the VMC did because it's essentially a connector and how it empowered them. And there's a lot actually 
of moms who don't live in Florida. So we have a mom coming on, um, and I think she's on this chat. Um, her <laughs> name is Hun Mi, um, and she runs a, um, a, a, a fitness center, but it's, it's focused on uh, uh, pre, and, pre and postnatal health um, for moms who, you know, need to, to feel uh, strong again. It's I not love about that niche. Healthy, yeah, not only healthy, but and fit, and you know mm -hmm. that that whole that whole idea of like getting the pre mom bod, like you know breaking that whole fake idealistic um, persona that doesn't exist. Like our 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 bodies are amazing. It's just about feeling you know strong and empowered. Um, yeah. Before and after having a baby, so she's going to be talking about you know, what, what led her to create her business because there was so much misinformation in, in regards to, you know, mom, um, um, mother's wellness. Like what can you, what exercise you can you, and you shouldn't do, you know, it's like a very, very strange. Um, That's great. And I'm sure a lot of moms can feel stuck in that area because they go from not, you know, doing a regular workout routine or maybe not even working out and then like wanting to be super healthy, of course, for the baby, but not knowing exactly what's safe and what to do. And exactly. so that's wonderful. Um, we're almost out of time, but I wanted to ask you uh, two things. One, um, what is one piece of advice that you would give for a mom who's just starting her business that you've learned? And also, what's your favorite hot drink? Because I ask everybody that. <laughs> oh, my favorite hot drink. <laughs> uh, so, piece of advice: um, it's okay to be fueled by fear. Um, mm -hmm. I was really, really worried that this would fail, um, that my little, you know, idea would wouldn't wouldn't blossom and wouldn't be born, and I would just mm -hmm. have it on paper as an idea. Mm -hmm. And um, I I just doodled. Um, and that doodle was uh, turned into the logo. And I always love saying this story. And the logo is really like, what was in, uh, my idea of like, I was in this uh, ocean, deep ocean. If you see, it looks kind of like a, like a lifesaver. And the mom and the M is what bridges the lifesaver together. So in my mind, it was like my child is, is pretty much what grounds me. And I needed to do something to feel better about my business and and just not being able to do photography I needed mm -hmm. to create something else so I was just so worried that I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to do it because I just didn't have the resources and I didn't feel like I knew anybody but just by bringing down my barriers and being like I need I need to I need help is anybody out there can mm -hmm. anybody feel the way that I do hmm. and that was the creation and that was what Field its success, bringing down that barrier, and and it's okay to be scared. And it's you okay just do it anyway, and you, you never anyway. know. Exactly, I love that. I think I had a post about that this week, so I'm totally aligned with you on that. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and my favorite hot drink is definitely Cuban coffee. I'm like, yes, oh, just like you know that little pick me up in the afternoon. Obviously, I've had to cut down quite a bit. Um, so I do half decaf, which is kind of depressing, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. well, I'm so excited to have you on the Yes. Yes. I have a lot of moms very excited. They're gonna have you're gonna oh. have a lot of questions. Oh, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. Very and excited. yes, I will send you over the blog. Um I hope to work on it this weekend. Okay. And um thank you so much for your time for sharing. And um, this will be on the IGTV, and then I will also send you a YouTube link um, once I download it and upload it Perfect. and all that good stuff. Well, thank so. you so much for having me. A pleasure. Thank you, too. And I will see you soon. Have a all good right. weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.